So, welcome to this lecture uh, on advanced uh, digital design, uh, digital system design in the course uh, digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, in the last lecture we have seen uh, how to kind of uh, decide the minimum frequency of a state machine and um, with regard to the data path and also um, we have looked at uh, the conditions you know the, the, the inputs are not very neat uh, waveforms and when there are uh, the real life inputs are there um, how to handle it uh, because it may not um, meet uh, some uh, kind of requirements we put forth. And we also have started looking at uh, the features I mean what is the difference between Millet and Moore kind of outputs and maybe how to uh, at least in some cases how to make uh, what is a Moore output into a Millet output or at least to illustrate uh, that is what we have done. We have um, converted a Moore output, output to Millet output and I have seen what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages. We have not completed it and we will complete it and uh, today. So, let us look at uh, the last uh, lecture slides and uh, we have uh, you know looked at the minimum frequency and we said the main game is suppose if you look at three inputs and put this clock then we soon find that uh, this clock is not able to detect change in this input 3. So, um, it is like we need at least one clock edge active clock edge during that change in entry and to kind of um, an ideal example we have taken some square wave and it is soon clear that uh, at least one clock period less uh, should come within this uh, kind of change and change being uh, symmetric or regular we can say that the clock frequency should be at least uh, twice that of the maximum in input frequency that is a kind of thing uh, we have told and uh, that is not surprising because the state machine is basically sampling the input looking at the inputs for any change any event and trying to respond it with uh, output a sequence of output sometime uh, that is why it is called sequential um, um, circuit. And, um, input in real life input is not a square wave or periodic waveform, but um, the pulse width should not be the criteria and we, that means that uh, you have an input which has a which changes for a while you know it becomes one for a while say a few nanoseconds then say one microsecond it is inactive again it comes uh, like for this change to be detected in a kind of uh, very straightforward way then one would expect to have a clock period kind of matching uh, this password. But we know that the, we, have, we talked about the frequency and we know that the frequency is quite low. So, definitely uh, this pulse uh, width is not the criteria for choosing the minimum clock frequency of the state machine or the controller. Um, also the, the kind of waveform suggests that there should be some way to stretch the, the waveform. And then suppose in this case if you stretch it here you could definitely use a lower clock frequency for the state machine. And we have seen some uh, practical example of I mean how to pull how to stretch it. But before that I said something uh, much more important here um, the requirement is only to detect the event detect that it is input has changed uh, the state okay, uh, and respond to it. But maybe in some cases you have a kind of accuracy requirement that means that there is a timing pulse and say we are trying to detect say it has gone high um, in response to some event the state machine has made it high uh, or enabled something to uh, something which has made the signal to go high and waiting for it to go low which needs some precise timing and in that case if you use a clock like this it will detect that it has gone high here and it will detect that it has gone low um, perfectly ok if just we are trying to recognize that it has gone high and gone low. But if you need some precise timing to be kind of 
uh, uh, measured then you know that this clock is much better because this clock detects that it is gone low after such a long time but this is much faster. So that means suppose if somebody say there is a plus or minus error okay, uh, within which need to be detected or within which an event has happened within which uh, that has to be responded or whatever then like this is the event and it should be detected with an accuracy of some kind of time period then uh, you know that the clock period should match that error okay. Then only we can detect it that is what I mean by this you know and this situation arises you know you have an event and somebody say um, the, the controller has to kind of respond to it within a certain time okay. It is nothing to do with the pulse width maybe the pulse itself remain high for a long time it is a very rare event but the requirement is that the event has happened but uh, the, the this may next event may happen after one second but somebody say that the response should be as fast as say kind of 1 nanosecond then definitely you need to, to detect it with that accuracy you need that clock um, period to be 1 nanosecond otherwise there is no way to do that okay. So that is what I mean and now let us come back to this kind of clock stretching and we have seen one kind of uh, circuit but which not very much used I have just shown something to illustrate. So this is the pulse catching circuit where the clock is this is the kind of pulse we are trying to extend it that is a clock and the input is 1. What we do is that we use a 2 stage shift register so that we are not sure because uh, this clock and this pulse is not synchronized so we, we are not sure when this will happen and um, that is double clock so that at least you get one period width here the synchronized pulse. Uh, this one so in the picture it is shown as almost 2 clock period but you know that uh, this has gone up this edge could have been very near to it and then you get only 1 clock period and that is shifted and it is reset okay. So basically it is stretched and if you put a multiple stages of um, uh, flip flops you can stretch it any, any longer but then uh, if you, it depends on the clock of the FSM but if you use a lower clock there is no reason to kind of stretch it you know more than uh, 2 stages because uh, we have one clock edge you know coming in that period that is all what we require uh, kind of to be detected by the state machine. So uh, there is practically there is no reason to put more flip flops because uh, after all this clock is the clock, clock of the state machine so 2 stages should be enough. I have shown a practical circuit which is not stretching it uh, what we do is that we as output uh, when a pulse come the output goes high and stay there till the next pulse come when the next pulse come it goes low and it goes to uh, the state machine and what state machine does is that every edge every positive and negative edge you can make kind of a pulse and that is a pulse to level converter this is the circuit you have the pulse clocking the, uh, the flip flop and you have a kind of toggle flip flop. Uh, the Q is fed back to D through an inverter. So first pass come it is high next pass come it is low and our aim is to get a pass here uh, at the receiving end and one pass here okay. So we do a synchronization for uh, timing reason to avoid uh, the, the metastability in flip flop we have not discussed that but um, at least for the time being. Uh, you just try to put a double stage uh, synchronizer which is nothing but same clock and you two, two flip flops in series and here is what we do uh, you do an I2 the input of the flip flop and output of the flip flop you combine and if you do I2 I3 bar you get a pulse here you, uh, the opposite I3 uh, I2 bar then you get a pulse at the negative edge and we want pulse at both edges because maybe in the last class I did not kind of um, stress it because here there is one pulse then it goes high when next pulse come it goes low. So at the receiving end we need a pulse here and a pulse there depending on the which is of the width of the 
the state machine clock and that is what we have done this is the clock of the state machine and uh, you do say you do I2 I3 bar you get a pulse at the positive edge I2 bar I3 you get the negative edge you over it then that becomes I2 XOR I3 so this is an XOR gate then you get pulse here and pulse here and you, you know that it, it comes with a delay of the clock period and that perfectly works fine for the state machine because uh, this is high during the active edge of the clock and that is this is correctly detected by the by the state machine. So, this is a very practical circuit very much used though there are some kind of timing constraints um, probably which at this stage we will ignore. Uh, it is not that you know it, it works for all cases you know. Uh, there are some restriction on uh, because of this double stage synchronizer because you know that for the I2 to come here it takes 2 clock period okay. And uh, so that means between these 2 pulses there should be at least 2 clock period gap of the state machine okay not, not, not nothing to do with the, the pulse itself okay. The, after the pulse comes here you know that it pass through 2 stages of flip flop and that introduce a latency maximum of 2 clock period because this is not kind this the input pulse is not synchronized to the clock. So, may take uh, maximum 2 clock cycle. So, um, uh, it is important that the, the, the gap between these 2 pulses is at least uh, 2 clock period of the, the state machine clock or the receiving um, domain clock we can say. Um, so, that is a circuit and that I have shown it you know in a combined together you have a kind of level to pulse to level circuit or pulse to toggle circuit and this is a toggle to kind of pulse back, uh, back circuit. And we have discussed when we have a register to register path be it a state machine uh, or a sequential circuit or a data path where a register a combination circuit register in the case of uh, the state machine or counter this could be next state logic in the case of data path this is some computation. But the clock period is chosen as TCO, uh, TCOM and T setup all maximum and T clock period should be greater than that. And to avoid whole time violation this delay plus this delay uh, which is minimum delay should be kind of greater than the, the minimum whole time. And very uh, many a times uh, the people ask a naive question why this cannot be the clock bar as I said there is no great issue with the uh, like the trouble is that you are looking at a part of the whole and if you have an old picture put in mind then you know you will soon realize that uh, this is not possible because this is clock clock bar and again next is clock that is fine but then uh, uh, there is a feedback from back here then you find uh, uh, this is the last one was clock and the feedback is also back to the clock not to the clock bar. Similarly you have a path here uh, and it terminates at clock bar and you have another path here which terminates at clock then he, both output go to another register then you are confused whether that should be either clock or clock bar but cannot be both then you are stuck okay. Similarly like you have a data path giving the signal to the state machine and maybe state machine receive output in respond to a, a, a positive edge triggered clock uh, you know register and a negative edge triggered register. So, there is a big issue. So, you cannot you have to stick to one polarity it can be clock or clock bar and timing wise and we have seen there is no big deal because uh, if you use uh, the all like if it is possible to use half the clock period then uh, this T clock min by 2 has to accommodate the maximum delay. The only thing is that the, the, the clock period will be you know twice that of uh, the, the clocking by single edge. So, the, the clock frequency comes down that is the only uh, kind of advantage but practically it is not possible to do that that is a simple answer and this is where we have looked at and uh, we were trying to kind of uh, understand um, the difference between Moore and Millet output uh, because in most textbook would deal with um, very simple cases of state machine with one input and one output and uh, somehow 
many a times it, it appears that um, you know at the beginning you can kind of uh, decide the state machine is Millet or Moore and accordingly you at least that is a kind of uh, it may not be intended by the textbook but that is a kind of picture many a times students get. Um, uh, but in practical cases there are as I said there are maybe um, so many states maybe more than 20 states more than 15 output and some are more some are melee and and one it is not a kind of um, uh, ideological or some uh, matter of taste to choose melee and more output um, it is not that you like melee or uh, something like that. It is uh, there are some cases where melee is the most appropriate thing and some cases it cannot be done at all. So you have to you have to kind of choose and that is what we are trying to do this and this is an example which is drawn from our case study that is why I take the case study so that you can illustrate um, the various uh, uh, kind of concept based on that once you understand that. So this is our uh, ADC kind of data acquisition controller. So there um, when we discussed we said that um, at the power on it comes to the state 0 and when the start uh, it is waiting for the start from the host processor and when start is low remain there and we are only looking at this particular output which is of kind of concern and the start of conversion pulse is 0. And when the start comes it transit to next state and there the start of conversion is made 1 and there is no condition on that state next clock it transit to the next state and SOC is made 0. So this state remains there for 1 clock period so you get a pulse of which 1 clock period and you make it 1 okay. Now let us think whether we can make this as a this is a definitely a more output because this is a decode of state 0, uh, this is a decode of state 1 uh, and so on. So uh, if the SOC is 1 we know that in the state diagram SOC is 1 only in one state. So it is decoded as uh, we know that this is 0, 0, this is 0, 1. So it is decoded as Q1 bar and Q0 okay that is all that is equation that is a decode of the present state. So what we are trying to do is that we know that already that this this SOC has something to do with the start okay. When as long as the start is low SOC is low when the start goes high the SOC becomes 1. So why not um, kind of envisage a melee output in that way okay that means that like this you are the machine is in state 0 at the power on it is waiting for the start signal. So as long as start is not active remain in this state and we say instead of saying SOC 0 we say SOC is 1 if start is 1 in this state not if we are not transiting to another state okay. So we are hoping that sometime being in this state the start becomes 1. So that state you know that state that means Q1 bar and Q0 bar that is 0 0 and start is the decoding of SOC it is a melee output and also upon the start it transit to next clock edge it transit to uh, the next state and we are skipping S1 because that is done here. So we skip to S2 where the SOC is 0. So uh, that is the melee output that is why, why it is, is converted. So I, I think you get the picture and I said already you see an advantage uh, there is one state less and you can imagine in a huge kind of state machine where there is lot of kind of outputs which can be made melee output then uh, you get uh, the states less so number of flip flops could go less and if the number of flip flops are less maybe the next state logic because it is a function of the present state and input the area of that could become less and the output logic which is a decode of the present state and input that becomes less and so on okay. So, so the area can become small. Uh, the state machine can be clocked very high you know high frequency it occupies less area reduces the power dissipation and so on. So, so many advantages one can think of and as I said that for a clever student um, 
like as an advantage there are already should some indication of a disadvantage you know uh, there is a timing issue because you are remaining in this state and when the input goes high the output is high okay that already should give you a kind of a hint as to what can go wrong. So let us kind of illustrate it much more than that uh, uh, this is not a quiz so I, I want that concept to be ingrained in your mind so that you design something I do not know um, what you are going to design maybe you design something trivial then it does not matter like if you design a computer game uh, where there is a chip and uh, if something uh, misfires it is it's not a great deal but if you are sending a uh, rocket uh, to the space and if a slight mistake uh, could put uh, things in a jeopardy. So maybe uh, you are you are part of an aircraft which is being designed and uh, there is a controller which you are designing as part of something uh, guidance then it has to be precise. So let us uh, kind of uh, imagine the worst scenario the critical application and handle this. So let us look at the timing diagram of uh, this kind of uh, two outputs. So, so this is a scenario so we have a very simple uh, three state and two state so we have the clock and we have a start signal which is going high like that you know it goes high after the positive clock head and for the two clock period say it is there. So now you look at the Moore machine okay so or Moore output so there you see that at the beginning start is low so definitely you know that this is S0 here also you know that when the clock edge comes it is still low so this is S0 and the next is S0 because the there is no transition when the clock edge comes it is low so it is S0 but in here you see when this clock edge come the start is 1 so the next one is S1 and you know that S1 in the next clock edge without any condition transit to S2. So if you look at the Moore output the states are S0 then S0, S1 and S2 okay. Now how does the SOC output looks like? We know that SOC is 1 when the state uh, state is in, in S1 okay. So the output will come like this you know you have SOC is decoded from the present state and it will be like that it will not match the, the, the period because there is a output logic delay because output is decoded from the present state. So there is a TCQ delay of the flip flop plus the T output logic that is it this one. So this is TCQ maximum TCQ plus maximum output logic that is the worst case gap you can have and it appears like this okay. Now let us look at the Millet kind of output um, we know that there the same thing uh, the state is S0 the clock edge comes it is still 0 it is S0 and it start has gone 1 and uh, you know the clock edge and it goes to S2 it, there is no S1 in the, in the Millet output so you remember that you know there it was start is high it comes to S1 then S2 but here start is high it just goes to S2 but it generates in S0 an output okay SOC is generated as a function of start. So that is what we are going to see. So here in the Millet case the first one is S0, second one is S0, uh, the third one is S2 but our output now you look output is in state S0 and the start is 1. So basically it is a decode of that and so you kind of and both together this is 1 and this is 1 and since start is going high here it will come with a delay because of the, 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 the decoding delay. So you have something like that you know you can imagine little more delay because start is going. Um, so I have not shown that but this is delayed a bit. So this comes like that you know it is very nice. So if you look at the advantage yes. Uh, one state less okay good and the output appears kind of much before at least a clock period before uh, the Moore output looks good it responds uh, faster okay. Now the game comes the question comes what is wrong with this you know here 
probably nothing can go wrong but here you see the the output is a function of the state and the input and this input mind you has got nothing to do with the clock and this input is not synchronous with the clock because this input is our state machine clock and this comes from a host processor and that processor has another clock. So this may be generated in relation to that clock which could be much higher than this. So it this pause can appear anywhere and the question is what happens if the start come late like that you know I have shown with a fainted kind of mark. So if it is suppose the start is coming very close to this positive edge then what happens is that the SOC become a kind of glitch you know. We said that there is no great timing restriction on SOC in the sense that can be a narrow pass but if it is very narrow it may not be detected or um, this could be thought of as some other output not SOC. So since the input if, if the case of if there is a case where the input is not synchronized and at the output you will get a glitch which may not happen in the case of more kind of output. So it is a bad news okay it means that the it is a bad news as well as a good news it depends on the, the way you look at it okay. So there is a famous story of a, a famous shoe company sending uh, the salesman uh, to a country where uh, people uh, you know long back people were not wearing the shoes or um, any footwear. So this uh, marketing person was sent to that country. So naturally he went around and his eyes were on the, the feet of the people and he wired back you know that that time there is no uh, internet and uh, the mobile phone. So he wired back he, he sent a telegram saying that I am coming back the people here does not wear any footwear okay. So he went back uh, after few kind of month uh, another marketing bright young man came as a marketing person he was sent to the same country okay. So he went around looking at the, the feet of the people he wired back you, you send two ship load of footwear uh, because the people here do not wear footwear okay. So uh, people not having the footwear could be bad news for somebody and a good news for someone so it is a way you look at it. So uh, the same situation here in our Millet Moore output the fact that uh, the Millet output when uh, in, the, in the presence of asynchronous input can produce glitch is a bad news but it is a good news. It, it, it means that when the input is synchronous you can generate the Millet output that is that's what we should learn positively from this suppose if this start is coming synchronous, synchronous would mean that in constant phase relation to this clock okay that means somehow this is generated uh, you know indirectly from this clock. So that every time it comes with a with a specific delay with respect to this clock edge you know it need not be that it comes every time with a very near to the clock edge it can come every time with a fixed phase relation to the clock okay that is a synchronous. So when the input is synchronous there is no timing issue and the output can be the Millet output. So that is a game that is a good kind of um, input so I am putting that in the picture. So you have two synchronous subsystem so you can imagine this is a register which is kind of um, the control signal is given by the, the state machine may be an enable signal or this is a counter which is kind of enabled by the state machine we have seen that or a load signal of the state machine uh, the con counter goes from the state machine and the state machine and all these synchronous subsystems are working on the same clock. So and you see that there is some output we do not know what kind of output maybe if it is a counter it is a timer it is a, it's a decoded output which is going to the state machine input and so on any let it be anything but it does not matter. So this output is synchronous to this clock and that goes to the state machine. So state machine in this case has two output I1, I2 it has two control output which is O1, O2. Now it is very clear that 
you know O1 can be generated as a function of I1 and or I2 okay as a Millet output O2 can be uh, a, a Millet output as a function of I1 and or I2 okay it, it need not be that the O1 is generated only as a function of I1 O1 can be a function of I2 I2 or I1 or you know there is yet another input which is synchronized to this clock uh, it does not matter maybe it is coming from the outside world somebody has synchronized to this clock and that can be uh, coming to the input of the state machine then this O1 can be uh, generated as a function of I3 which is synchronized with the clock. So that is a good news that whenever you see a kind of uh, the synchronous inputs uh, you can happily generate the Millet output as a function of that if if it makes sense it is not that you struggle hard if it if it is nice if it if it works out if it is part of the spec then you can do that and that give you all advantage of um, you know the all these advantage it comes the output comes early to more output number of states are less yeah the, the, the glitch does not come uh, since it is synchronous. So that is all about the Millet output when we come to a case study I will show um, definitely 100% uh, how the Millet output can make uh, the, the life easy only thing is that you should kind of from the day one when you practice you should try and think whether the particular output can be Millet output that is my advice to you. Uh, so that is about the Millet output let us move forward okay. Now let us consider uh, the little issue with um, the state machine generating the control signal we have looked at it particularly uh, we have seen an example in this case we have taken a register in our CPU example I, I hope you remember. Uh, this was uh, the beginning uh, of the, the course we have uh, you know we were looking at the advanced digital design um, and we have taken the CPU as an example we have looked at the top down design I have illustrated all the process all the methodology by taking this example okay. So there we had the CPU registers and it is an 8 bit register and we said that input is connected to the register the Q output is connected to the same data bus because there is only a single internal data bus and that was connected to the bus using a tri-state gate. So the game was that when some data from the input has to be latched to A the state machine will give a signal latch signal or an enable signal in this case we call it RA underscore L and that comes here when this is high and the clock comes. Uh, the data was whatever was here gets latched okay and we mentioned that it is not that this latch signal is going as a clock because it is possible that we want to kind of continuously uh, load the data in, in some application okay not maybe with the CPU register in that case it is very convenient keep uh, this latch signal or enable signal high for say 10 clock cycles so continuously. Uh, each clock the data gets latched maybe this is a FIFO or a counter which is getting incremented whatever uh, but may not make sense for the, the CPU register okay. And we have seen uh, we were looking at what kind of how the design should be uh, to make that happen that means when the latch signal is high and the clock comes the data gets latched. So a very so that is what is shown here we have a state machine and some register or counter or some sequential kind of element uh, which is working with the same clock and the state machine is giving an enable signal here so that the input gets latched in, in this register okay. So and we have seen one possible kind of implementation very naive the very first thing which comes to mind because we say that when the latch is high and the clock edge comes uh, the data should get latched okay. So this shows 8 flip flops input and output are combined through a tri-state gate because there is only single data bus and this is the enable signal and we have just combined okay. Now at the time of discussing this we did not look at the timing okay because we probably we did not learn enough about the state machine. Now since we have learned uh, we can look at the timing. Now assume that this is coming from a state machine 
So the pulse is like that but then we know that the, the relation of this pulse to the, the clock of the state machine. So I am putting the, the clock frequency the clock waveform. So we know that the state machine uh, something happened to the state machine uh, it changes a state and the output is decoded. So there is the output kind of come delayed with respect to the positive clock edge. So there is a TCQ uh, the state flip flop delay and TOL output logic delay and it comes here okay. Now you can already see the trouble that we are ending here. So you and this you see there is an overlap 1 1 here and there is an overlap 1 1 here because of this AND gate delay it get comes delayed and so you something like that you know you get 2 positive clock edge and you see the trouble okay. We are expecting it to be clocked by 1 and it gets clocked by 2 okay uh, clocked twice and in the case of register you, you may ask what what is wrong with it because say some data is here you get you clock it it latch here you clock it again it may latch here okay. But look at the timing when this data may be coming from some other register in the as usual in the data path and through some combination circuit. So that is what that means that that is also clocked by the same clock. So data is kind of coming out of that register and normally you know that we should be latching it at this edge. It is too early for like you know uh, we have a clock edge here but that maybe that is too early because we decide the clock period depending on the TCQ, TCOMB and T setup and we accommodate that in a clock period. So but here if you see uh, the, the, the timing available from the clock edge to this clock is only little. So it is too early for registering maybe this is right uh, like we, we have decided that the data appears here but then you know that um, uh, this uh, the data gets large here but we do not know whether the data will remain there because uh, that uh, register is clocked by this already the output is changing maybe this is coming in the whole time uh, after the whole time window and so on then uh, a wrong data can get latched. Suppose this is a counter which is getting incremented on this kind of latch signal then you know that an edge comes it gets incremented probably again it gets incremented and so on. So this is because of this glitch uh, this scheme is not timing wise very kind of neat okay. So that is why we have I have discussed this points. That is why we have looked at this scheme okay. Uh, when we discuss the CPU I have shown this, this scheme and this does not have the timing disadvantage okay. So here we are not doing anything with the clock period clock path we are combining the latch signal in the data path. Uh, it has advantage in two ways one is you look that when the latch is 1 the input is going there okay. So input gets latch and you see that I, we know that because of the state machine decoding it comes delayed and it is made 1 and the input is coming from some register clock by the same clock. So it appears it starts appearing here and it has all the all the time till the next clock period and, and upon the clock this clock edge the data gets large here. So it is it's very clean okay. Uh, but the only problem uh, as you see is that the clock is coming every clock uh, this is getting kind of clocked okay. So maybe the data we enable some time and the data goes here but all other time uh, this same output is recirculated back to input and so on. So uh, assume that say in a case where the latch signal uh, comes only once in a, an hour but unnecessarily uh, this whole thing gets you know keep on switched uh, so many times suppose it is 1 gigahertz for 1 hour nothing happens but the, the because of the switching lot of power is getting dissipated. So the recirculating buffer is timing wise is very kind of nice very clean but the power dissipation wise it is really 
hopeless and you know, absolutely hopeless it has no relation to when the latch signal is high all the time it dissipates power it just a matter of frequency uh, whatever is a frequency it gets switched and the power is dissipated now so it means that for the for the power as far as the power dissipation is concerned the earlier scheme was nice because when the latch signal come you get two pulses okay you maybe clock twice but if there is a one hour delay nothing happens to the clock and there is no power dissipation so let us probably if you want low power dissipation so when you design uh, you can adopt the scheme and we have seen that we will i will show examples but you are into the to the like um, low power domain where you are working with handheld devices mobile devices then you need to dissipate less power anything battery operated or even now it's wise you know there are even in a desktop pc there are millions and millions of pcs uh, all around the world even slightest you know power uh, saving will kind of uh, help to reduce the overall power consumption of the world so we should always look to reduce the power dissipation so here see the game the trouble comes because um like we need actually the our um kind of clocking should happen at this edge because uh when a latch signal comes here the right time to clock is this the second edge because the data has changed at this clock edge and it has to propagate and come here so the right thing to do is that we would like a pulse like this okay uh definitely uh but the 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 problem is that uh because it is coming you know half into this clock period it is it's problematic suppose uh, suppose this uh kind of this latch signal instead of coming with regard with respect to the positive edge so assume that it is coming with respect to the negative edge so this pulse will come you know start like this and stop like this and if you and it then you get one pulse very cleanly here okay so that is the trick okay so if you can resynchronize this latch signal with a negative clock edge okay then it comes like this and you can and it with a resynchronized latch signal the clock is re and it with a resynchronized latch signal then you will get a pulse correctly like this and you can in use it to clock this particular thing so i have explained what's the idea behind so that is what i am going to show now so maybe i will show that and come back okay so this is what is uh, the we were discussing so we will what we will do is that we will resynchronize uh, this uh, with the with the negative edge it comes here then and it okay so uh, let us look at uh, that um, you know so that is what is shown here so you have the latch signal which is coming from the state machine now we put a flip flop and um there is a clock which is coming and it is it's a negative edge triggered flip flop okay you see that there is a bubble and the, so that means this latch signal is resynchronized to the negative edge so that is we are calling clock 1 and that is anded with the original clock and which generates a clock 2 which is used for clocking okay so let us put the waveform so you have a clock and normally the latch signal comes like that and then we are looking at the clock one here because it is going to a negative edge to get flip flop so it is see when the negative edge comes this is one so the clock one output is one and when the negative edge comes this is zero so it becomes zero so you get a pulse with a delay uh, with respect to the negative clock edge and you and now this clock one with the clock so this clock one and clock is anded and you get a clock two with a delay little delay and you know now you are correctly you are something is happening before at this edge and we are supposed to get this edge and that is kind of latch with this particular uh, clock edge 
um, and everything works smoothly and there is only one pulse uh, this is clogged and it does not continuously dissipate power. So, when you you need to kind of um, you need a low power uh, the clock gating then one should adopt the scheme and very standard scheme you now earlier we had this scheme and this is converted to this. So, what many a times the, the tools do is that uh, when they see such a clock gating they can easily convert automatically to this by inserting a uh, kind of negative edge to get flip flops. So, so, many a times uh, tools try to automate this kind of thing looking at this scenario it converts into this even it is possible that uh, you implement with a recirculating buffer and the tools detect that it is a clock gate kind of recirculating buffer and it can do the proper clock gating by you know taking this resynchronize with the you know it can just uh, replace that with this because it is very regular and and that is kind of very close to the it has to be very close to the real flip flop ok. Otherwise there will be timing issues because you are playing you are introducing the skew in the path of the clock. So, this is many a times done automatically by the tool you give either this or this then that can be kind of detected uh, as a case for proper clock, clock gating and that can be introduced and um, um, the FPGAs can be built with kind of resynchronizing flip flop uh, near to a register and so on it depends on the FPGA. So, when we will look at the, the FPGA architecture then we will see is there a scope is there a flip flop nearby another flip flop so that this kind of game can be played. But mind you um, there is one thing I should be mentioning here. So, it looks it, it looks um, that sometime uh, you know the it appears that uh, it is enough to avoid this glitch problem if you kind of push this gate signal uh, you know uh, the enable signal here you know by introducing uh, certain delay you know you introduce uh, suppose uh, you can introduce 7 nanosecond and it appears here. Uh, so, uh, you might think that you know you can add a kind of um, 2 inverters to get that delay, but then you know that this delay depends on the clock period and if you add arbitrary delays and change the clock frequency it does not work and you know that the delays are function of the temperature and the supply voltage and so on. So, if you kind of uh, in, uh, in the slowest path you introduce a delay and when it becomes fast this may not work and so on. So, that is why we resynchronize with the the negative clock head that you should keep in mind. So, you should not try to kind of delay this and kind of uh, you know gate it you know that does not work because of the reasons mentioned. And now this is what we have seen. So, this at least uh, we said that this solves the problem of um, kind of uh, uh, the power dissipation, but many a times we use the same technique. Uh, to achieve not only one in this case it is just a large signal, but there could be any number of uh, kind of control signal in the data path and uh, that we have seen in the case of a counter uh, it is not that just one control signal this is just like an enable signal for a register, but assume this is a counter uh, this could be an enable signal from the state machine there could be a load signal from the state machine there could be an up up down signal from the state machine and so on. So, this scheme can be kind of extended we have already seen it, but I just maybe it is a right point to stress it again. So, you can have any number of control signal you can have different data paths like parallel data shifted data and when you have multiple control signal you need to have some priority uh, like if both come together. Uh, which takes uh, precedence ok that should be kind of um, decided and that is very natural we have seen that uh, a control signal which comes close to the D will have the precedence. So, let us look at this you know let us look at this example we have already seen it. So, this is a counter with an enable ok very useful kind of structure. 
So, the clock the suppose is a say 4 bit counter then you have 4 flip flops the clock is common reset is common and suppose the state machine has an enable it is at the reset at the beginning. So, whenever it is enabled it is incremented that is a basic idea. So, some event happens uh, the state machine enables it and it gets incremented you know that is a green game. So, how it is implemented you have a 2 to 1 mux the enable is the select line of the mux when the enable is 1 q is nothing but q plus 1 and incrementer is in the path and otherwise the q is recirculated. So, definitely there is participation, but uh, the timing wise it is very neat and we know how to write a VHDL code for it. So, we write a process because we know that a single process will work for uh, uh, the, the registers preceded by some combination circuit and this is what is a combination circuit. So, we say we write a process with clock and reset in the in the sensitivity list and we say begin if reset is 1 because it has a priority asynchronous if reset is 1 then q gets other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 and this is synchronous we say if enable is 1 q gets q plus 1 end if that means else you recirculate it and end uh, the end if of the the first if and end process. So, that is what shown here process clock reset begin if reset is 1 then q is other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 and under that because there is a control signal if enable is 1 then q gets q plus 1 end if ok. That means recirculate if not q is q that is the meaning of it. So, that is a 2 to 1 marks which is synchronous which is coming. Uh, to the input of the, the input D of the registers. So, let us take another example where there are not one control signal, two control signal we have already seen it, but I am just reinforcing the concept. So, here we have a load signal a 2 to 1 mux and when the load is 1 the input which is 4 bit gets latched here upon the clock and if the load is 0 then if enable is 1 ok. So, it, it has two control load signal and the enable control enable is 1 the count gets incremented otherwise count gets recirculated. And naturally we know that this has a priority because this comes first. So, if irrespective of the enable if load is 1 the input gets loaded when the load is 0 then depending on the enable either it is incremented or uh, the output is held ok. And we know once again uh, this register with this combination circuit can be coded as single flip flop this is synchronous. So, this comes in you know within the clock even clock is equal to 1. So, uh, same thing process reset and clock begin if reset is 1 q gets q you know q is other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 and the highest priority if load is 1 q gets d in else if enable is 1 q gets q plus 1 end if ok end process you know. So, uh, that is it process clock reset begin if reset is 1 then q gets other 0 else if clock even clock is equal to 1 if load is 1 then q gets d in else if enable is 1 then q gets q plus 1 end if that means else the q gets q uh, this is the end if for this this is the end if for the main thing and the end process ok. So, that is what we have <coughs> I think we have come to the be the, the last part of the lecture. So, before taking up a new portion I would briefly tell what we have done. Uh, we have looked at the Millet and Moore output and we have seen that uh, the, the Moore Millet has an advantage number of states are less the output comes early, but there is a problem of glitch. So, it works neatly with the, the synchronous uh, kind of input uh, you can straight away go for Millet output if it permits and we have seen the condo signal and in the especially in the case of register a clock gating has timing issue because there are two pulses and the solution is that to go for a recirculating buffer it does not have any problem uh, with regard to the, uh, the timing, but all the time it is dissipating power and this can be extended to the multiple condo signal. We have seen a case of a counter with an enable and uh, where um, uh, it works uh, kind of without any timing issue 
and we have seen the VHDL code and when there could we have also seen a counter with load and enable with which load as a priority and once again it can be coded in a single process and we have seen the example we have seen it earlier and we have also seen uh, a kind of uh, low power uh, solution of clock gating to avoid this kind of glitches we resynchronize this large signal with this negative edge and a adding a constant delay will not work because the clock period can change and the delay of the combinated circuit itself can change. So, we resynchronize with the, the negative clock edge and the resynchronized version of the, the condo signal is gated with the clock and that works as a clock. So, this works very neatly there is no issue with the timing only thing is that it uses a an additional flip flop for a set of registers not that it is uh, there could be 16 kind of flip flops and one additional flip flop is required depending on uh, per condo signal. We can say we require an additional flip flop for each condo signal to resynchronize. that is a basic idea of clock gating for low power. So, uh, today what we have seen is that we have completed the Millet and Moore output and we have seen the advantage where the Millet can be safely used. And we have looked at the, uh, the clock gating solution recirculating buffer what is the issue timing issue with the clock gating and how it is avoided in recirculating buffer. But the issue is that the power dissipation and we have seen a clock gating scheme for the low power and we have seen uh, the extension of kind of recirculating buffer for multiple condo signal where there is priority how to design it how to code it and all that. So, in the next lecture we will try to take some more issues such timing issues and other issues of the state machine. Then I am hoping either take part take the, the VHDL coding of the state machine or we probably start looking at the, the, the PLDs. So, that is a plan. Um, so, today I am winding up I uh, advise you to go back because we have covered quite a lot go back and review learn well. I wish you all the best and thank you.